Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk you through how to use this sample rugby union template created for NAC Sport. And this will work in the Pro Plus and Elite versions of NAC Sport. The main reason we need those is because we've got panel flows in this template and we also have clustered buttons. Okay, so this will work in Pro Plus. So let's take a look at our template to begin with and just explain the premise around this. So mostly we're looking at Team A's actions and Team B's actions, and we're really focused on the possessions, the style of possession that we have, and where those possessions are happening on the pitch. So we've got a red zone, an amber zone, and a green zone for each team, and then different types of possessions. So a restart attack, line out attack, scrum attack, counter attack, turnover attack, or penalty or free kick attack. On either side of this, we have set piece moments or point scoring moments for each teams, or for example, a kick to touch. Okay, so team A is down here and team B is over here. And also we've got some actions which would typically happen within a possession. So if a team is kicking it, if they concede a penalty or a free kick, or if the opposition do the same as well. So let's ignore the video that's happening up here for now and focus on the template. Let's say uh, that we had a restart, for example. What I would do here is I'd probably click Team A Restart. And then I come to my panel where it's given me options about the set piece. So for here, it's not a line out or a scrum. So all I need to look at is the outcome. So I could say on this restart, it was contested. Uh, we got a clean collection and we won it. And then I'm going to mark where that happened on the pitch. So I'm going to click here. Then I might say, okay, we've got a team A restart attack. And I click over this area because you see that lines up with my red zone. If I clicked here, it would start us in the amber zone and it would say it was a restart attack from the amber zone. If I clicked here, uh, restart attack from the green zone. Okay, uh, not likely to happen. Then as we move up the pitch, so if we move into the amber zone, I could click down here and our possession is still on the, in the background and our restart attack is still on in the background. Then we can move up to the green zone and maybe now I've got a line break. So I'm going to mark that a line break has happened. And let's say in this instance, we go and score a try. So I would press team A try, and then I'm going to press escape on my keyboard because that turns off the um, possession clip, the type of possession clip and uh, the pitch area clip because they're all manual mode buttons. Let's look at another example now. Let's say Team B have a line out. So we go Team B line out, and this time we've got some more options. So I might say it was a seven man line out. Uh, it went to the middle and we delivered off the top. And then I'm going to say it was contested. We still got it clean and we won it. And that line out happened here. Okay, then we're going to say we've got a line out attack on this part of the pitch. We move up to the green zone. But then maybe uh, we have a handling error and we can see the scrum. Then I press escape to turn that off. Okay, so it's a process of, of working through these elements. Then let's look at the final set piece we've got. So team A have a scrum and now we've got a scrum delivery. We can say it was um, number eight pickup. It was contested, but it was disrupted. However, we still won it. And that happened here. Okay, then we can say we've got our scrum attack. And again, we could go and move through. Uh, let's do another line break and we score again. And then I press escape to turn those off. And obviously now after scoring a try, we didn't do this last time, but I would say there's a point kick. So I click that it's a point kick. And then I come down here to my types of kicks that we've got. So point kicks. And I'm going to say it was either a successful conversion or unsuccessful. We're using the colors. So I say successful conversion. And that was from here. Okay. Other things, let's say we've got a penalty, a penalty kick, a kick from hand, so I click penalty kick, and then I come down here, was the kick to touch made or missed? Okay, if it's a point kick, um, I would click this one, and again, if it's either a successful penalty kick or not, or a drop goal or not. And I do that for uh, each team, has their own sections. What we've got down here now, let's say we do another one, so, um, we've got a turnover attack from here. We're in the red zone. We go to the yellow zone. If we then kick it, I press this one over the zone that we're in. So I'm going to say team A kick 
and it will give me information that that happened in the yellow zone. And then I can say that it was a kick in play. So it was a kick to compete. And we class that as successful. And we say where that kick happened. Okay, we've still regained possession. Then we move up to the green zone. But now we've actually conceded a penalty in the green zone. If the opposition did it, I could press that they've conceded a penalty in their red zone and that would still go into my clip. So I'm going to say we conceded a penalty here in the green zone. And then I press escape to turn those elements off. OK, then the opposition might have a penalty free kick here. They haven't chosen to kick to touch and they move up the zones. And then they've conceded a penalty in this area as well. So we'll look at some, what some of that data looks like, but we've also got a dashboard to link with this. So if I go and open up this dashboard here, what we'll see is that we have some information about possessions. So the total time in possession for each team, the time spent in those zones on the pitch, red, amber, and green. And then we're looking at some set piece things. So restarts, lineouts, and scrums for each team, whether they're won or lost. As we come across, this is where the kicks are happening. So this relates to this category that we're pressing. So basically kicks out of hand. If it was green, it's a successful kick out of hand, whether that was a kick for territory, kick for touch or 50-22, which is this yellow icon. So the kicks for us and the kicks for the opposition. Then we've got some point scoring action. So how many penalties or free kicks have we conceded? So the gray team here is team A. Orange is team B, so the lines relate to each. How many tries and conversions have each had? Um, and penalty kicks, drop goals. So this is all your point score in action. This is designed to work in Pro Plus, so I haven't put a score element in here because we don't have those calculations in Pro Plus. So if you were using Elite, you could add in a data label for automatically calculating, or you could just manually go and type in a text label here. Same up here, you might just put in the team name or you might put a picture for each team. So that's our dashboard. What we also have, if we move on now to the timeline, is you'll see that we've got our different rows. So it's organized to have all team A's actions first, then all team B's actions. Then we're looking at the time spent in each zone for each team. But what we can do here is obviously go and look at the clips, but now we could use that graphic descriptor tool to see some more information. So if I wanted to see where all our restarts happened, I could press this and we see those icons here. So red is unsuccessful, green is successful. And again, if I click on any of these moments, it will show me that part in the video. So that applies to our set piece. It also applies to our kicking actions. For example, I press team A kick here. The same for um, our point kicks that we have there and our penalty kicks. So if you really want to look at kicking actions, you can get a lot of information from this. The final tool that shows you where all of the data comes in, because remember that template had a lot of clusters and information that you might not have seen happening, is our matrix. So if we look at a full matrix for this game, you'll see that we've got our rows down the left hand side, but then we've got some more information up along the top. So if we score a try, I can see at what type of possession that's come from. So here we had a try from a restart attack, a scrum attack and a counter attack. I can also look at where our possessions started. So the origins of these possessions okay, for team A and team B. I can then also look at where we're having a discipline issue on the pitch. We can look at actions that happen in the possessions, like our line breaks and things that have gone wrong. We can look at set piece actions and more information about those kicks as well. So everything's organized and you're getting a lot more information that's obviously evident here in your matrix, but it all comes from following that flow in the template. So let's just jump back to the register and environment. And one other thing to note here is you're going through, because if this is information you want to use, you might apply it. You don't have to do this. But at the top, we've got two descriptors of first half and second half. So this is where we'd use that tool of right click and then deactivate an auto add descriptor. Right click and activate auto add descriptor. So you'd start with first half on, do all your first half analysis, go to the second half, turn that off, off turn on the second half one and work away. So we've got everything clustered up here. One of the key things to do is press escape. 
when a possession finishes or the ball goes out of play because that will turn off all those clips. I would start with the set piece and the outcome of that. Then we're going to define the type of possession we've got where that started on the field. We move up through the field with these options here. Within the possession, we can say if we've kicked it in an area, if a penalty or free kicks have been conceded by us or indeed the opposition. And then we can also give some outcomes here for those possessions as well. So hopefully this is a useful template for you uh, to work with to get some deeper analysis of your rugby games. Or maybe it's just a template you use to, to understand how some panel flows and some different clusters work as well. So feel free to make a copy of the template, come and edit it, look at how I've built it, look at the different vertical orders on our buttons, and maybe you'll get some ideas for your own sport or your own templates. Hope you found that useful. Thank you.